joining us here at Lighthouse Discipleship Center. My name is Dave Everett. My wife Sherry is going to be joining us here in a second. And uh, we're going to be continuing our Bible study tonight on Effortless Change by Andrew Womack. We'll be in chapter 12 again tonight talking about understanding. And I'll get back to that in just a moment. Uh, to say no, again, all of our Bible studies are archived on our website at lighthousediscipleship.org as well as our YouTube channel, Lighthouse Discipleship Center. And so with that in mind, you know, we're just going to jump right into the study again tonight. We're talking about effortless change. <coughs> Excuse me. And that might seem like a very odd title to some of you. You know, uh, how can you change effortlessly? That just sounds like an oxymoron. And yet, a lot of us religiously are trying to change our lives. And it doesn't work that way. We, it's God, His seed, His nature that changes us from the inside out versus us trying to change ourselves from the outside in. And, uh, you know, yes, there, there's part, we have a part to play. First of all, we cooperate and we yield to the Lord, we yield to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Galatians 5 16, if you walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. You know, talk about walking with God. In the same way you receive Christ, the same way you walk in here, Colossians 2, 6, and 7. And so, we're talking about evidence change. And really, we're talking about the parable of the sower. And Jesus said that if you don't understand this parable, you won't understand any of the parables. This is the parable of all parables. And so, in the parable of the sower, you have the seed being sown on four different kinds of soil. In all four kinds of soil, they each heard the word of God. But only the soil that fell on the good soil, but only the seed that fell on the good soil, heard it and understood it. The first soil, which is basically the pavement, Jesus explains how they didn't understand it. And how the enemy came right away and took that seed. And so we're talking about the importance of understanding the word of God. You know, that's why, one reason why we are called to make disciples of all nations. You don't have to understand everything to become born again. But you do have to understand everything for his seed to take root in your life and change your life. And so, you know, we, we want, we all of us want to see good, positive change in our lives. But it's going to be God changing us from the inside out versus we us changing ourselves from the outside in. If it's going to be lasting, if it's going to be genuine change, if it's going to be change at all, it's going to be God doing it. And, and, and part of that change comes through discipleship. And through discipleship, we begin to understand the Word of God. And so we are here, we're picking it up again mid-chapter. And uh, this is a big chapter. And we're on page 127 if you have a book. Uh, and so we're talking about the title of this section is called The Doorway. And, uh, you know, um, I'm pick, you know, I, I always hate picking up a uh, lesson mid-chapter because we're really picking up mid-thought. And so, you know, you're just going to have to read or listen to the previous uh, sessions that we have archived on our website and our YouTube channel for you to catch up to where we've been. Anything you want to share before we get started? You know, this effortless change, it... You know, Dave and, and Andrew and, and I, I mean, it's Andrew's teaching, and, and I get, get what we're trying to get across. It's God's word in us. It's his word that's the seed. It's his nature in us that's producing this change. Uh, so we don't have to. And in, in a sense, it's kind of like the picture of a farmer. The farmer sows the seed. He might... Uh, prepare his fields, he might water, he might get rid of the weeds, but he doesn't strive to get that seed to produce and to grow and to sprout and to bear fruit or vegetables or whatever he's he's sowing. He doesn't go out there every day, come on seed, come on seed, come on seed, you can do it, you can do it, grow, grow, grow. He doesn't like take a gun to it, he doesn't take these tools and hit it and smash it and shake it and, and pull on it. He doesn't do anything to that seed except prepare the ground and the, the seed on its own, how God created it, grows and bears fruit. And, 
you know, with with God's word, we don't have to take God's word and, and smash it and throw it and and do whatever we it is to 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 just struggle with it for it to grow. When we believe God's word, we get God's word in us. We change effortlessly because God's nature changes us from the inside out. His word washes us. There's so many scriptures that that Dave and I could could just share with you on this. It's God's word that that cleanses us. I think it's Ephesians where he talks about the he washes us with the water of, of the word. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, but it, it's his word. It, it's Jesus, the Word became flesh, dwelling in us. You know, the the power that raised Jesus from the dead, dwelling in us. It's that that power, God's nature, His Word in us, that is producing this change in us. You know, when we've shared uh, throughout this this whole thing that for like five, I think it was five years back in whatever year it was when Dave and I lost everything. We lost our jobs, our home, car. Uh, if it wasn't for my grandma letting us stay with her, we'd be on the street. I mean, there there was um, just a five year drought in our lives. And during that time, you know, I, I just, I have several heroes in my life, but Dave is one of them. He could have been really depressed in that five years because as a husband, as the head of our home, it's in his nature to provide and care for his family. And he could have very easily done a pity party or been depressed or whatever it was. But he did two things. He strove to find work. He put out, I don't think we could have even counted how many App, job applications he submitted right left in between out between whatever he I mean he tried for jobs that he was more than qualified for he tried for jobs that he was underqualified for he tried for jobs that were just the beginning of the bottom rung of, of people getting jobs I mean everything but the, there was two things that he did the one thing was look for jobs but the second thing was he dove into God's word, and he just, uh, I don't know if this is the right word, but he devoured it. He just soaked it in, and he just gleaned from God's word because he wanted to study God's word for himself and see that what he believed was so, and there was tremendous fruit, and it was God's word. In, he All he did was believe God's word. He studied it, yes, but he believed it, and God in him it, there was so much fruit out of that five years and we could look back and we use it as an example we could look back and say oh my gosh what a drought that was horrid in, in, in ways it was but it also those five years uh, bore tremendous fruit because I had a godly husband who dove into God's word All right, well that's, that's great <laughs> you know I know we're talking about me so it's hard to respond but uh uh, let's go ahead and jump into the lesson again. We'll talk about the doorway, the section of the title section. I'm sure we'll bring us back up to speed here. I'm amazed at how some people have tried to make the word so difficult. I've actually heard of some preachers who think it helps their delivery to chase after all kinds of tangents and dig deep into the Hebrew and Greek. Of course, there's a place for these kinds of things. I use them myself at times. But some people have made the word so complicated and intellectual that the average person can't understand it. Jesus did just the opposite. In this very parable we're looking at, he spoke of something that was easily understood by everyone. They were an agricultural society. Every one of them had sown seeds. They lived in this realm. Jesus took something very simple that people could relate to and used it to teach the word. <coughs> Yet I see people all the time who think it's a sign of their intelligence if they can use words that nobody understands. They talk in such a way that you have to go check a dictionary or believe God for interpretation to be able to understand what they've said. Some people actually think that this is great ministry. I believe it's just the opposite. If you really understand something properly, 
then you should be able to explain it in a way that anybody can understand. I don't know if I achieved that, but it's certainly one of my goals. Many people have written and said that I make the Word of God so simple that they're able to understand it. They also mentioned that there are some other folks they can't understand. We need to present God's Word to people in a way they can understand. Understanding is a doorway that allows the Word to get into your heart. If there isn't understanding on your part, then the Word will be stolen from you immediately. Satan will come and take it away. The only people the devil can steal the Word from without any effort are the people who don't understand. You must understand the Word in order to receive it. You know, I can relate to Andrew sometimes where he made a statement here and said, I don't, uh, something along the lines, like, I don't know if I'm accomplishing helping people understand, but uh, that's my, at least that's my intent, and he, he does get feedback uh, that people uh, do understand what he teaches and I don't understand others. And, and I've gotten that too to a certain degree, you know, and that's been my heart because I want people to understand it. I'm not so interested in how many people are following me, liking me, you know, whatnot. I'm not saying some that I don't appreciate that. My point is, uh, I want you to understand it. And and I also don't want it to be, it to be so simple that it's so shallow either. I want I want to talk about some of the, the deep things of God to a certain level so you can walk in them and you can experience it. But sometimes if it's deep, that just tells me i got to break it up in bite-sized pieces so we can understand it. Hopefully that makes sense. And so, you know, a good teacher, a good minister, a good teacher is going to teach it where you can understand it. A bad teacher might have all the great intents. <coughs> but if you walk away going, what did they just say? Hmm. Uh, you know, then that's, in one sense, that's not a good teacher. And the, the focus right now is not so much on teaching. The focus right now is understanding you got to understand it. I understand we all have different learning learning abilities or disabilities. Uh, we all have different backgrounds. I mean, right now we're, we're teaching online. We're teaching different cultures. I don't know. You know, some of you are from India, Pakistan, uh, Africa, uh, other parts of the world, even other parts of this country. Uh, you know, I don't know if some of our illustrations make any sense to you. You know, I don't know, you know, like he said, he, Jesus is using a parable here that has to do with agriculture. And because that's society, you know, that's society back then. Everyone planted the seed. <laughs> Everyone had a harvest. Some might have smaller or bigger ones, but they all understood that. And so, you know, I understand, uh, actually, let me scratch that. Let me start over. You know, my heart, we have to understand it. And whether we got to make it, have to buy size pieces, sometimes I will say the same thing over and over and over again because I want you to understand it. And the title of this section is, you know, understanding is a doorway. If you don't understand something, you're not going to be able to apply it. If you don't understand something, you're not going to be able to grow it. If you don't understand the Word of God, it's not going to take root in your life and just stay and grow and be fruitful. That's, you know, the Word of God is a seed, but if you don't understand it, it's not going to take root. You know, uh, the, different jobs have different procedures and different things. If you don't understand how to do something, you can't do the job. And so it's key that we understand how to do something. You know, you can't do something you don't understand. And so it's important that we understand the Word. <laughs> <coughs> the Word of God. It's important that we understand the Gospel. It's important that we understand who we are in Christ. It's, under, it's important that we understand God's Word. You know, even back in school, there, there's elementary school, and then there's middle school, and then there's high school, and college, and, and whatnot. You can't understand college. You can't understand high school. You can't even understand middle school if you don't understand elementary. You have to learn the elementary teachings before you can even go on to other other teachings. Element, you know, even to this day, there's certain things that I, I might have taken a class in high school, 
I've, I've, I've graduated, I pass, but either I cram for the test and pass and never really learn the material, or I learn the material but because I don't use it, I've lost the understanding of it. I've lost it. But you know, almost everything I've learned in kindergarten, almost everything I've learned in first grade, second grade, third grade, I do use it today. Almost everything I learned in elementary school, I still use. How to read, write, do math, social skills, but not, I still use all those stuff. The elementary teachings are not immature teachings, they're the foundation. They're foundational. And, you know, even Paul, he makes, I uh, know, excuse me, the writer of Hebrews, uh, Hebrews, uh, I think it's Hebrews chapter 5, the end of the chapter, the writer of Hebrews makes a comment, says, by now you should be teaching others, but you, but instead you have to have someone teach you the elementary teachings. In one sense, it was a rebuke. Um, but, uh, it, you know, sometimes we need to be rebuked. Sometimes we need to be reproved. The Bible says that all scripture is proper for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. We need to allow the Word of God to reprove us from time to time. That is good. Being one who is allowing God's Word to reprove you, that's maturity. You show me someone who is not willing to be disciplined, not willing to be reproved, that's immaturity. But someone who is willing to be reproved, that is maturity. That's how you learn. That's one of the ways you learn. Okay? A good athlete didn't, you know, didn't, didn't, there's no athlete, there's no Olympian, Olympian, Olympic athlete who didn't make mistakes along the way. They would not be in the Olympics, they would not be uh, in the finals, they would not, they will not win a medal if they had not been reproved along the way by their coach and different things. And so, we want to grow, we want, uh, we, we're talking about effortless change, we want God's seed to take root, but we got to allow the Word of God <coughs> to reprove us. But going back to what the writer of Hebrews said, you know, some of us, some of you, excuse me, um, some of us, you know, we have been walking with God a long time. But we can't teach others because we still don't have the basics. We still don't have the elementary teachings. I get a lot of people reaching out to me wanting to join me in ministry. First of all, I don't know them yet, so that, that's a little premature. But second of all, you know, one of the, if I did know you and I had you join our ministry, one of the most important things I'm going to want to know is what are you teaching? Because if you're not teaching the right doctrine, if you're not teaching the right stuff, you know, I love you. You can be a part of our church in a lot of ways, but I'm not going to put you on the platform. <laughs> you know, if you're teaching, if, you know, I'll, if, and if you can't teach the basics of the gospel, you know, then I don't, then, I don't need you to teach anything else. Um, you know, you, I, I want to hear. I, you know, I don't want you to, to just tell me what I want to hear. I want to hear. If you get to know somebody, you can, if you get to know someone, after a while, you know what they believe. And uh, why could they talk about it all the time? You don't have to guess. I mean, you, if you know me, you don't have to guess what my passions are. You don't have to guess what I really, really believe. You might not understand every single doctrine I believe and everything, but you know what I'm passionate about because I talk about it every single time. And every message, every Bible study, every time we get together here. And so, I mean, there's just no question. Uh, and I want to know what people are, you know, if you're the worship leader leading in songs, I want to know what you believe because what you believe is going to tell what kind of songs you're going to pick. I'm not talking about uh, whether it's, you know, the, the style of the song. I'm talking about the words and the lyrics of the songs. You know, I'm big on that. I can't have you teaching, uh, you might think it's sound doctrine, but if I think it's false doctrine, I'm not going to have you teach that. You know, I had a pastor, he wanted, me, he wanted me to join his team, and he knew that he and I didn't see eye to eye. He goes, it's okay. We don't have to be teaching the same stuff. I go, how confusing to the people. How confusing if one pastor is teaching this and another pastor is teaching the opposite of that. That is totally confusing. You know, and he's the pastor and it's not my job to assert his authority. If I don't agree with the pastor, I just, I don't have, I do not have the responsibility or the authority to correct a pastor uh, that, that I'm not a part of. What do I do? If I don't agree with the pastor, I just leave. 
you know, I just leave. And so, uh, anyway, that's a whole other topic. But I just, uh, I'm trying to get to the point where, you know, understanding. We have to understand the, the Bible. And, you know, uh, and it says in Hebrews that by now you should be teachers, but someone has to teach you the elementary, the principles. Uh, and he says, you know, uh, you, 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 by now you should need me. He goes on to say, by now you should need me, but you still need the milk of God's word. The milk of God's word doesn't mean it's, it's immature. It's the foundation. If you don't have the foundation right, you can't build on that. You know, I mean, there's some people in, in Andrew here at the Bible College, Kenneth Bible College. You'll find different teachers don't agree on every single doctrine, but they agree on the foundation. They agree on the essentials. They agree on the basics. And uh, Andrew's not going to have someone teaching his Bible school or any of his events if he doesn't know them and he doesn't agree with their doctrine, uh, at least uh, the major doctrines. And I agree on everything, but I agree on the major stuff. And uh, why am I saying that? Well, that uh, because, you know, when we're talking about understanding, some of us don't understand the Bible because we have so many different teachers out there. Some are teaching this, some are teaching that, some are teaching this, and they're, they're all over the map. And it's confusing. You know, I've, Sherry just talked about the season where we lost everything. And it was the end of that season that I remember I, I went to God and, and I actually had a, a long Bible study over a couple different years. And I said, I, I was just asking myself a question, actually. I said, what do I believe and why do I believe that? Do I believe what I believe because my parents told me to believe it? Do I believe what I believe because my pastor told me to believe it? Or do I believe what I believe because I can tell you by the Word of God what it says? You know, am I quoting a pastor? Am I quoting my parents? Am I quoting Andrew? Am I quoting Joseph Prince or someone else? Or can I quote the Word of God? Do I believe what I believe because I, I believe the Word of God and I can tell you why I believe the, the Word of God? Or do I believe what I believe just because I was told this is true and therefore I just believe it? There, I, you know, I'll be honest. And during that time study, there was some things that I came up with that I don't know if it was my parents teaching me or a pastor or whatnot or, or just my own how I connected the dots. For example, righteousness. You know, I've gone to different people in my past, pastors and parents. I but I, I always thought righteousness was right doing, doing right, living right. But righteousness is a noun. Righteousness is is who you are in Christ. Righteousness is in right relationship with God. The word is used five hundred and twelve times in Scripture, and it's a noun. It's not a verb. And I've gone to my pastors. I've gone to my parents. And they're not the ones that taught me that it, uh, the, the way that I was misconstrued in my mind. I don't know where I came to that conclusion, but it was wrong. And, I, and when I got a revelation of righteousness, it changed my life. I had already been in ministry. I have been in ministry for years. Uh, but I had the wrong doctrine. And the wrong doctrine, if, because I understood the wrong doctrine, I was teaching the wrong doctrine. And... You know, you can't teach something you don't know. <laughs> and so I had a lot of tapes. I had a lot of messages that I taught to the earth, and I threw them all away. And I said, I'm, re I'm preaching the wrong message. And I, I, I got a revelation of righteousness. I even had some addictions in my life at the time. When I understood righteousness, it broke those addictions. It broke all that. I actually felt more. I, I knew I was born again when I was in first grade. But I knew I was born again to, ever since then. But I felt born again for the first time when I understood righteousness. Understanding righteousness was a doorway for me. It changed my life. It changed my ministry. It, cha it even changed our marriage to a certain level. It changed everything about me. Because I finally understood it. I thought I understood it. But what I understood was wrong. What I thought I understood was wrong. And it just it revolutionized my life. I can talk forever about righteousness. It's just my it's my favorite topic. And the Bible says righteousness is the foundation of His throne. It's very foundational. If you if your doctrine is not right about righteousness, I would say your, your entire doctrine is probably wrong, because it's the foundation. 
the writer of Hebrews says it's the elementary teachings. It's the milk. It's the, and so if you've got the, if your elementary teaching is wrong, every all the other teachings you build on that end up be wrong too. Because the foundation's wrong, everything else will be, be wrong. Everything will stem. Because all scripture is profitable for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. So the man of God might be thoroughly equipped for every good work. But if you're not properly trained in righteousness, you are not thoroughly equipped for every good work. And that doesn't make you a bad person. That just means you need to be trained. You need to be reproved and trained and corrected in righteousness. Anyway, I know I can spend on all that. I don't know if that makes sense. But when I finally understood, see, when I finally understood righteousness, I felt for the first time I understood the Bible. All my doctrine, I felt like in many ways, almost all my doctrine was wrong because I didn't understand righteousness. It was so foundational. And, I, because I, and that's one of the biggest topics I'm going to look for if someone who's going to be a co-minister in my ministry. What's their revelation of righteousness? That is so cute. That is so huge. That is uh, almost one of the, the biggest doctrines I'm big on. And, uh, uh, and so, and anyway, I can get a span on that. But I'm trying to just paint a picture of understanding. There's some other things. There's, you know, we, we've been out to churches where they did not believe in healing. They did not believe in the Holy Spirit. Uh, we've been to a lot of churches where they're, not, they're against prosperity. You know, we have people who fight us to be poor. Who, they fight us to be sick. Totally anti Bible. I'm going to be talking about, in some degree, prosperity over the next three weeks on Sunday morning. It's not just about prosperity. I'm going to be talking about experiencing the blessing of God. I'm not just talking about exclusively about finances, but it's part of it. It's a big portion of it. And I'm going to bring all that into the gospel. And so, uh, when you understand righteousness, you can understand healing, you can understand prosperity, you can understand a lot of these different things that some people don't like. And some people will fight and some people will unfriend me. That's fine. You know, uh, I'm sorry for them. But uh, I'm just, uh, I'm not going to change my message because, like Andrew would say, if I agree with you, we'll both be wrong. And, uh, and so, uh, it, anyway, but it's just, anyway, I don't know anything I want to piggyback on that. Oh, I want to piggyback on so much. Uh, Dave, Dave gets, always gets me fired up on the inside and you might not see it on the outside of me. But on the inside, I just want to run preaching here, there, and everywhere uh, on so many different topics because uh, Dave, Dave just just gets gets me going. Um, oh gosh, there's so much I want to touch base on. But this foundation uh, that Andrew and Dave, especially Dave, has been talking about, that is so vital to us understanding, to us living the Christian walk uh just living out uh the the gospel and it, it's i think that i think that words from the holy spirit it understanding the gospel our foundation is so vital to us so important so Can i just say it's not sorry i mean i don't normally interrupt now paul says in romans 1 16 to 17 he says i'm not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god to everyone who believes it to the so everyone to believe. Then it goes on to verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. The gospel will reveal the righteousness of God. So if you don't understand righteousness, you don't understand the gospel. And, and anyway, so I, I just want to tie those two together. I preach big on that. But anyway. Uh, and that was one of my tangents I wanted to. Dave, Dave you know, has, has shared that he, he loves to talk, talk, teaching and talking about righteousness. You know, check out his teaching on our website because uh, I, I love, love, love his righteousness teaching, and it it will transform your life. Um, I will teach it again soon. It might be next year, uh, 2022, 2022, or or later this late fall before I get into it. But I will be teaching it again soon. But I encourage you to really uh, go on the website to check out those classes. Uh, hold your horses till he he gets around to that again. But um, it it is a definitely foundational teaching. It will transform your life in such a big way. It'll help you understand the Word of God and understanding righteousness. You know the gospel. You know Andrew's trying to say it. Dave's trying to say it. I'm trying to say it. The gospel is a powerful message, but it's a very simple message. And if 
we complicate it by making people jump through hoops or saying they're not smart enough or spiritual enough. You know, we, we can't, we can't go there. Uh, that, that is so wrong. God wants, not, not only did, did God send his son, Jesus, to the cross for all of us, but he doesn't want anyone to perish. He, he has his word, he wants his word available to everyone who believes and he wants all of us i know we we uh dave was talking about prosperity and people tend to immediately go to finances when when people talk about prosperity but i think it's peter who says that he wants us to prosper and be in health john. as our john says it third john too uh prosper and be in health as our soul prospers we are to prosper spirit soul and body not just in our pocketbook not just in our bank account not you know how wherever you save your money that's that's all fine and dandy but we are to prosper in everything our health is to prosper uh our daily walk with god is to prosper our family dynamic is supposed to prosper everything we do in life is to prosper and i don't want to get off on that tangent i'll just let dave preach it the next uh, however many sundays for his his message but the gospel, as powerful as it, as it is, it's a simple message. And I have so many verses that I'd love to turn to, but, but for sake of time, I'll refer to them. Hebrews 1 talks about how God spoke to us in times past through the prophets, but now has spoken to us through his son. Not everyone... I get not everyone believes in, in Jesus, and I, 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 it just breaks my heart over it. But the prophets only had a voice that only reached so far. They could only tell of things to come, and I, and I hope I'm using my words right. But God has revealed the mystery of the cross of salvation to us, through his son, through his word, that we may all understand it. You know, I used to ask God so much, how can someone say with Down syndrome, or one of those mental, I don't even know how to explain it, diseases, I guess you could say, or lack of chromosomes, whatever it is, how can someone simple-minded understand the gospel? And I just, I stewed over it, because I don't want anyone to perish, and... I get people with pride or people who just reject God. I understand that more than I than I understood that at the time. Someone whose mental capacity uh, wasn't all there. And we have been to several churches where there were uh, people with Down syndrome. And one church we went to, there was a young lady, I think she was in her teens, with Downs. And yet... She loved God so much. She worshipped better than the rest of the church combined. And her her mom, uh, one day, they were, her and her mom were having a conversation. And she told her mom she wanted to be baptized, uh, water baptized. And the mom was like, well, did you, I mean, she, she was, couldn't understand herself how her daughter could even voice that. And she's like, do you even know what that means? I mean, she had to word it thinking, you know, how is my daughter going to understand this? And she and she understood it. She, Jesus died for me. I believe it. I want to be baptized. And that is just one proof of God wanting it to be so simple for us that he so loved the world that he gave his only son. He wants that. He wants that in, in every life, every everyone to understand this. And uh, there's that verse that, that talks about God is uh, not wanting any, anyone to perish. Oh, gosh, I have so many verses. But the, the one I wanted to share that Dave alluded to in Colossians 9, verse, uh, chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. And we both, Dave and I, could probably just 
preach the hour and more just on these two verses. But when you think back to when, and I'm assuming that everyone listening is a believer because we're having a Bible study where we talk about God and Jesus and the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. But when, and I'll just use me. I both Dave and I were were young. He he was in first grade. I was around that age when we both came to know the Lord. And I mean, as a child, you understand. As a child, when you're a child, you you it can't be complicated for you to understand. And the the ease of believing that that God so loved me that He gave His Son as a child it was it was very easy for me to to. To believe but it's as you have received him walk in him it's not complicated we're not supposed to have a, a big old long to-do list it, it's not you know go through this and graduate to this graduate to this level this level this level God wants us to have wisdom and understanding and to know the gospel and to know his word and it's not a complicated process we, we complicate it ourselves. If we don't have the, 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 the difficult teachers that, that Andrew alluded to and, and Dave did, sometimes we can make it difficult ourselves thinking that, that we have to jump through hoops and, and, and do this or that for God to love us when, one, God loved us before we were saved. <laughs> of course, he's loving us after we're saved. And... If we truly knew the, the word of God and tr knew God's nature, we would understand that God loves us no matter what, uh, no matter what we do in life. But that foundation of the gospel that centers us, that, that, that rock that we are to build on so that we can't be shaken or moved, you know, the, that's how we can, can prosper. That's how we... In, all things and to, to help us in this to help us understand to, to to teach us in all things we just have to to read it in in John and the different places where Jesus promised us the Holy Spirit he said it was expedient for him to leave so that the promise of the Holy Spirit could come the helper the teacher the comforter I rely so heavy on the Holy Spirit each day when I realize that I can have a relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I, I wish I could. I wish I could just give you that revelation for yourself because, truly, as much as a physical human being, Dave, my husband, is my best friend. The Holy Spirit, who is a spirit, is definitely. Uh, my best friend, and we crack each other up all the time. Let me tell you this too, you know, everyone has to understand the Word of God for themselves. I can't understand it for you. Your parents can't understand it for you. Your spouse can't understand it for you. Uh, your, your pastor or someone else, Andrew, can't understand it for you. We can teach it. We can teach it well. We can teach it bad. We can teach it all kinds. But you have to understand it. And uh, no one can understand it for you. No one can understand about healing for you. You have to understand it. And we can, you know, you can read you can read the same scriptures I read, but it's the Holy Spirit that helps you understand it. But you also, there's, it's not just the Holy Spirit, even though he's the, he's the teacher. But even Jesus taught, and not everyone understood it. You know, this parable of the sower, talked about how the same seed falls on different soil, and not every... Soil understood it. You know, uh, you have to understand it for yourselves. Now we can now you can we can help create the environment. We can help create. You know, uh, I can preach the gospel in such a negative way that I just turn you off, and where you put up blinders and you're not going to understand it because I cause an offense, or. You know, you I could be teaching in the most merciful, gracious way, but you have such a wall that you're just not even going to listen. You're not even trying to understand it. That, that's just a couple scenarios. There's all kinds of different scenarios. But we can't understand it for you. At the same point in time, I mean, Sherry gave an awesome story of someone who would have Down syndrome. They understood it. We've, had understood, we've come across kids who understood it. 
A child can understand this. An adult can understand this. It's deep, but it doesn't have to be complicated. You know, it, it doesn't have to be all... Into, we t there's some intellectuals, some Bible scholars that make it too complicated. You know, that, you know that's not good either. Uh, I mean, any subject for that matter, you make it complicated, people are not going to learn the material. I want you to get it. But that, just because I want you to get it and just because it's simple, that doesn't mean there's not some other things that we can get into. But you have to be, but we, you know, a good teacher is going to help break it down so you can understand it. Uh, and so that you can uh, in, increase your knowledge and understanding. But, you know, uh, there's so much I can expand on this uh, about understanding. But I want to kind of get back to the book and, and I can go on so many different rabbit trails with this. You know, this, this understanding, I want to laugh because we, we've talked about how foundational is to have a good foundation, which is Jesus Christ, the, the, the gospel, righteousness. Uh, when I was in, in high school, you know, by all means, I am not an engineer. I never have been. I probably, I'm assuming I never will be. But whether you're making bridges, building a house, a skyscraper, whatever it is, you have to have a good foundation. And in my science class in, in high school, uh, we were to build bridges out of uh, popsicle sticks. I had no clue what I was doing. We were supposed to have like a competition in our class of whose bridge was built the, the, the best and could withstand uh, the most pressure. And if you had studied it out and new bridges and engineering, even with popsicles, if you built it the, the foundation of the bridge the right way, that bridge, even if popsicle sticks, could withstand so much pressure. My bridge, sad to say, did not do too well. Uh, it wasn't the worst bridge, but it did not handle a lot of pressure. But the foundation, if you have the right foundation, your, your life will uh, be strengthened in such a way uh, you know, that, that verse that I've alluded to in John about you're going to prosper, you're uh, be in health and prosper, your soul prospers. I hope I'm not chopping it up too much. That foundation is so vital to our Christian life. We do not want to build our houses on the sand where any hint of storm and our house gets gets knocked down and blown away. We want our foundation, our house, to be built on the rock of Jesus Christ so that no matter what comes, our house will stand firm because it's built on the rock of Jesus Christ. Exactly. Well, let's go ahead and read the next section. Digest your food. As a minister of God's word, the Apostle Paul also understood this. He said, To the weak became became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I may am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. 1 Corinthians 9.22 I try to do the same thing Paul speaks of, especially when I'm ministering in another country or culture. I've been all over Europe, down to Central America, and to certain countries in Africa and Asia. When I go into a different culture, I try to use illustrations that are specific to the situation. I do whatever I can in an attempt to get people to understand. Not understanding the word is like me putting food in your mouth, but you not being able to chew or swallow it. It just stays in your mouth, never getting down on the inside where you can begin to digest it. You could literally starve to death with food in your mouth if somehow or another you never get it down on the inside of you. There are many people who have heard the word of God but they don't understand it. They hear scriptures, but they don't have a clue what they mean. There's no spiritual understanding on the inside. Therefore, the word doesn't release any of its life, any of its nourishment into their life. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Proverbs 4, 7. You not only have to have the right information, but you have to have enough understanding to be able to apply and put it into practice in your life. 
Okay, great, thank you. So, um, you know, I like this. I like this analogy of digestive food. You know, some of us are trying to bite off too much at once, and you know, we're just getting. You know, I I know a lot. Some people they're just they're listening to teachings almost 24 hours a day. They're listening to this teaching, this teaching, this teaching all day long. We gotta be able to digest food. You can't eat that way. You know, uh, I've been on cruises where I've been with some people. You know, they just want to eat all the time, and. Uh, uh, and nothing wrong with that. And you're on the cruise, and that's what you want to do, that's your appetite, go for it, you know. Um, but, you know, I, just, I can only eat so much. There's so much food there, you know, that I can only eat so often. And when I do eat, I want to enjoy it. So, uh, you know, um, uh, anyway, you, you know, I, you got to digest your food. My mom always taught me, chew it up good, you, you know. And, uh, and so uh, sometimes it's so good that you just want to inhale it, but... Uh, it tastes better when you actually chew it and get to enjoy it, and you get to t enjoy the taste longer anyway. Um, but it's just, uh, you know, again, and some of this is just piggybacking on some of the things that we've already mentioned. You know, you, you got to understand the word. Uh, there's a lot of people with good intents and whatnot, but you have to be able to understand your, your, the word. You got to be able to digest it. You know, it's not a matter if you read so many chapters a day, so many verses a day. It's a matter that you understand the Word of God. That is so key, you know. And uh, yeah, there's some ministers out there that they mean well, they, they have a good heart, but they're just hard to understand, you know. And so uh, that, that's not put, I'm, not, I'm not saying that to put them down, but so, and sometimes some of us just need help. You know, uh, there was something, something too, Andrew said here, it kind of reminded me of Philip. Remember Philip? He was ministering to the Ethiopian unit on a chariot. He was reading, I believe, from Isaiah. And Isaiah, I mean, Philip asked him, do you understand what you're reading? And he was like, the Ethiopian unit, the eunuch said, how can I unless someone explains it to me? And so he got into the chariot, he explained it to him, and, and the Ethiopian unit got saved and got baptized that very hour. And so, you know, uh, sometimes we just need someone to understand it. At the same point in time, we also need to be teachable. You know, all of us need to be teachable. Even Andrew needs to be teachable. Even I need to be teachable. The moment you're not teachable, you will not learn. You stop learning. And when you stop, le stop learning, you stop growing. And in one sense, when you stop growing, you stop dying. Uh, you know... If you can't take down any more food and you won't eat anymore, you will eventually die. You know, uh, one of the signs that you're on your deathbed is that you can't keep food down anymore. Now, I'm not saying I'm not, I'm not saying you just don't have an upset stomach or something like that or, or uh, a temporary issue, but it is t immaturity to not be able to listen. Now, there are some people that I won't listen to, and Paul talks about that. There are some people we are to mark them and we are not to listen to them and there are some people some false teaching and whatnot i won't listen to and so and that is that's rightfully but that doesn't mean i won't listen to anybody i everyone has that everyone should have a pastor maybe two or three of the most but uh, but i don't encourage that to be a big list i'm not saying that you won't go and uh uh enjoy another minister at a different conference from time to time but don't just live your life from conference to conference to conference where you don't have time to digest your food. You need to be able to process it. You need to be able to, you know, I mean, the early church, they met daily, and I'm okay with that, but they didn't meet all day every day, you know. And, uh, and so uh, sometimes I just like hanging out with God. And uh, we do stuff, we talk, we have intimate times, but sometimes I just like, you know, sometimes Sherry and I, we're just like... <coughs> Hanging out. We don't have to have a conversation all day long. We don't have to be doing something all day long. You know, the, our hardest days are actually our days off. We don't even know what to do when we have a day off. And, uh, and we're so, sometimes we're so tired, we don't even know. Sometimes feeling like doing nothing sounds good, and yet we feel so guilty about it. Anyway, I'm getting on a different sidetrack. But uh, it's just, I'm just, I'm talking about, this is a relationship. And you can have a relationship with the Word of God. And digest it, chew it, eat a good meal, 
You know, sometimes you need someone to explain it to you. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I mean, you, as adults, we have to have people explain stuff as we were growing up. You didn't come out of the womb knowing everything. And just like you have, there was a, there was a, there was, you had to have a development season. From, I mean, there's different stages of that. There's infant, there's toddler, there's young childhood, there's, you know, elementary age, there's adolescence, you know, there's young adulthood. Even as seniors, we're, st you know, we're still learning stuff, you know. And there's different stages of life, but we're still learning, you know. Uh, and that's good. That's healthy. That's okay. And there's some things that I need to, sometimes I need to ride the, use the training wheels for a while. But at one, there's a day coming where hopefully dad will take off the training wheels and they'll help you ride the bike on your own. There's nothing wrong with, you know, I, I, Sherry's better at roller skating than I am. I'm still the guy holding onto the side rail all the way around the rink. You know, we don't have those too much anymore. But, uh, you know, I was having, a, it was more exciting to me to hold on to the edge and to fall down every five minutes. That just didn't, it, you know, and, but, you know, it was okay. But, uh, uh, anyway, I, I just, it's okay to have someone teach you. You know, uh, as a child, as a new, as a, a child, you need someone to teach you. As a young person in the Lord, you need someone to teach you. And maybe you know a lot, even as an adult, you know a lot of subjects, but maybe you're learning a new trade. Maybe you're learning a new subject. Maybe you're, you're trying a new career. You need someone to teach you. And you might have to hold someone's hands for a while. Wow. Nothing wrong with that. Same thing scripturally. You might have a revelation on a lot of different things, but on, this to on a particular topic, you need, to hold, you need someone to teach you. That's okay. That's how you learn. That's healthy. You know, what's not healthy is for you to say, I know everything. You know you don't. There's nobody here who knows everything. We're all learning. Andrew's still learning. Uh, you know, um, we're all, we all, we all need to be discipled. We all need to be admonished. You know, I know a lot about righteousness. But every once in a while someone will say something and that's just a new perspective I hadn't seen before. And I just love it. It's awesome. You know, I, there was a, someone, I made a comment on someone's Facebook post the other day. I thought it was pretty good. And a, a gal came after me, and she was just preaching the gospel. I was like, you go, girl. <laughs> you can go, go for it. It was just awesome. Because I, did, I didn't need to echo anything she said, because she just said it perfectly well. Yeah, and, uh, and so it was just awesome. You know, I don't know who this person was. You know, I don't even know the person who posted it was. But, uh. It was just awesome, you know, and I, I I took some notes, you know. It was just awesome. It was on a topic that I was very well versed in, but I, I still learned stuff. It's it's good. We learn that way, you know. Um, even if you're a good farmer, you might take notes from another farmer, you know. Even if you're good at what you do, networking with another person of of, of the same trade, you still might learn some shortcuts or some some troubleshooting and different things. You know, you might learn some things. It's okay. You might relearn some things. That's actually good. You know, you might, I might know everything about righteousness, but that doesn't mean I don't study righteousness anymore. You know, sometimes we need to revisit some things. Sometimes we need to, some, some subjects, some doctrines, some things, they've been lying dormant too long. We need to reopen these things. Sometimes, it's, you know, it's real easy to get comfortable and complacent. And we need to, we don't get to a point where you think you understand it all because that's when you stop growing. Let's learn. Let's understand things. Let's be taught. And so, anyway. When, when we went to Bible uh, school, uh, Bible college, um, it, you know, there's people from all kinds of uh, walks of life. I think the youngest there might have been 16, 17, or 18, I, I forget. And then we had some, I mean, all ages up through into their 80s. We had one particular person who kind of hemmed and hawed about going to Bible college. And they thought they knew it all. And one of the uh, 
staff, uh, she worked in the office, she encouraged this person and she was like, you know, you, you might think you know it all, but just, you know, come in and have an, uh, an open mind, open heart to be teachable. And this person uh, within the last month actually graduated from Bible college. I was so proud of them. And the reason why they took so long, because this was, I don't know, eight years, 10 years it took them to get through, they had some health issues. So they, they, they would go, but then they'd have to, to take some time off and then go. But their praise report to God was just, oh, it was so sweet because they, they stuck with it. They put aside their, their pride of thinking they knew it all. Uh, they put on a teachable spirit and it, even with all the hardships they went through and the different things and, and I don't know that they the whole and complete story but they stuck it and through it and they were so blessed and uh, they had just come back from working at a kids camp where they were able to be a blessing to the kids and um, you know these 80 plus year olds there was at least three there was a couple and then there was the, another lady we lost contact with the the couple um i think they moved to arizona but i'm not sure uh but the the one lady in her 80s we still see her randomly on on facebook and she is traveling the world she's uh, in different ministries, uh, helping out as volunteers or staff or whatever her, her position is. She's just going around ministering and, and traveling and in her 80s, she doesn't even look it, um, but she is just living proof, as we all are, that Christ in us, letting the Holy Spirit lead us, being teachable, uh, being teachable is really basically equals uh, being able to be used more for God. I mean, that that's this me in a nutshell. And all these success stories we're talking about, they were teachable, they are teachable, they might have some of them have their own ministries now, but even though they have their own ministries now, they're still sitting under a minister, they're still sitting under the pastor or a group of pastors. And, and so they never reach a point where they stop learning, where they stop growing, where they stop being ministered to. I think we all need those that we minister to, and I think we all need people that are ministering to us. We need both. We need to be mentored, and we need the people we're mentoring. And, that, and I don't think that needs to be a big list in the same season. For example, I don't think it really should be two or three more, more than two or three people at the same time. Maybe at some points at a different level you can have 12 disciples like Jesus did, but you know, Jesus had different kinds of relationships. He had the multitudes, he had the 70, he had the 12, and then he had the three, and then he had the one. And uh, he wasn't as intimate with the 70 as he was with the 12. And he wasn't as intimate with the 12 as he was with the three. And he wasn't as intimate with the three as he was with, with the one. And so we, that, you know, I don't think it should be a big list of people that we are intimate with, but I think we should all need to be People we mentor and people we're mentoring. You know, we have 10,000 people following us. I can't mentor 10,000 people. You know, until we have a team, I can't really do a lot, a lot with that volume of people. And so the best thing I can do is sit under our teachings and, 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 and go there. And But you know what? I know what I'm looking for uh, based on some scripture. Uh, those uh, I would take it to a new level. And one of those things, there's, not, there's some other things, but one of those things is, you know, there's a lot of people reaching out in the comments. I have people tonight who are reaching out for prayer. You know, people want me to want to join in our ministry, but, you know, if you're coming here every week listening, why, why don't you reach out to some of the people below who are needing ministry, needing prayer? You know, I, I can't, I shouldn't be the only one doing that. We should all be doing that. We're, if we're the body of Christ, then let's act like it. Let's be the body. Let's, if we're the church, then let's be the church. You know? And so uh, that's what I... And for those who are faithful are the ones that I will look to do 
other other things with it. If you can be faithful with the little things, you can be charged with more. If you, you know, even in Second Timothy two two, I think it is, you know, it's the faithful ones. Faithful in what? Well, faithful to the Word of God. Faithful in coming. Faithful even tithing. Uh, I'm not necessarily looking for that, but uh, you know that is an attribute. Uh, Paul talked about it. You know, he talked about it in Timothy. He talked about it in Titus. He talked about it in Thessalonians. He talked about it in Philippians. He talked about it quite a bit. You know, um, and so there's other things. You know, reaching out to one another, um, serving one another, loving one another. You know, the greatest among you is a servant of all. And so, uh, if you can't serve. On a simple Facebook post, how can I trust you to serve another in a different setting? Uh, where I mean, you got you got people right there. They even spelled out their prayer requests. I mean, uh, you can't get any easier than that, you know. And so uh, there's and there's other things that you know, like I said earlier, doctrine. What do you believe? I don't know what you believe yet. I don't even know uh, most of you by name. And so. Um, but anyway, I don't say that to discourage. I just say that for a few people that I know out there who are just they want they want to uh, to partner. Well, I, you know that's that, that's a process. That's not going to be automatic, uh, you know. And so, uh, and so anyway. But I encourage you. Uh, we will have Bible study this Wednesday. Some of you might miss this last Wednesday. We had some major computer issues, but well, we're back in the saddle. We're back. Uh, we're, we're we're we'll be back this uh, Wednesday. We're out of time for the night. And do you have something before we break it? You know, I think that's a good note to end on is to remain teachable, to be teachable, uh, just to keep your heart soft in that. Um, you know, Dave and I listen to Bible teachers and pastors throughout the, the week. Um, we have Bible classes on our website that, that I'm going through, and I've already been to Bible college. And some days I will listen to the same Bible class over and over and over again because I might be distracted in my day or busy or the, the minister has just something that I want to make sure I, I get. You know, there's no time frame for us to be teachable. We will, uh, Lord willing, always be teachable. Um, and, you know, I want us, like Andrew was sharing, to digest the Word of God because it is a simple but powerful message. Um, there is someone uh, who's asking for healing, um, so I, I do, as we pray out, to, to pray for you, any of you uh, who need healing. You know, the, the, the Lord God, our God, our Redeemer, is our healer. Uh, thank you for putting your trust in Him. He has sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to the cross for us. By His stripes, we are healed. Jesus paid for you to be healed, spirit, soul, and body. Uh, so we command healing uh, into your body, into your families, and uh, be blessed. Amen, amen. So uh, I will respond to the comments after, afterwards, like I used to do. It takes me a little few minutes to get to all that, but uh, I usually respond to all of them. You know, I don't respond. If you make several comments, I'm not going to respond to all of them. Uh, I'm just going to, you know, know it's one or two, but uh, uh, anyway, um, anyway, uh, thank you guys for listening, we'll see you this week, God bless you, bless this week, and uh, bless you, and uh, uh, there's not much more I can say, but I'm going to end it tonight, so anyway, God bless you guys. <clears throat>